class. Our topic for today is all about set operations. The first set operation that we will be discussing for today is all about the union of sets, usually denoted by this symbol. When we talk about union of sets, what we're going to do is combine all the elements of the given sets. For example, set A with elements 1, 2, and 3. And set B with elements 4, 5, and 6. If we are asked to get the union of A and B, what we're going to do is just combine all the elements of A and B, resulting with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now, what if your given sets have a common element? For example, set C with elements 4, 5, and 6, and set D with elements 2, 4, 6, and 8. As you can see, they have two common elements, namely 4 and 6. Now, what we're going to do is just recall the rule in writing the elements of a given set that no elements must be repeated. Therefore, in getting the union of C and D, you're just going to write the element once. So you will have here 2, 4, 5, 6, and 8. Therefore, the union of C and D will be 2, 4, 5, 6, and 8. The second set operation that we will be discussing for today is all about the intersection of sets, usually denoted by this symbol. When we talk about intersection of sets, what you're going to do is just look for the common elements of the given sets. For example, we have here set M with elements 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and set N with elements 2, 4, 6, and 8. If we are asked to get the intersection of M and N, what we need to do is look for their common elements. In this case, we have 2 and 4. And that is going to be the intersection of M and N. Let us now proceed to another example. What if your given sets have no common elements at all? For example, we have set X with elements 1, 3, 5, 7, and set Y with elements 2, 4, 6, and 8. Now, in order for us to get the intersection of X and Y, as you can see, they don't have any common elements at all. Therefore, your answer is an empty set. The third set operation is the difference of two sets usually denoted by a minus sign. Now, in this case, what you're going to do is to just remove the elements of the second set from the first given set. For example, you have A minus B. What we're going to do here is to remove the elements of B from A. For example, you have set A with elements 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 and set B with elements 2 and 4. If we are asked to get the difference of A and B, again, we just need to remove the elements of B from A. So we will now remove 2 and 4. The remaining elements of A will be 1, 3, and 5. And that is going to be the difference between A and B. Always remember class that A minus B is different from B minus A because in this case what we're going to do is to remove the elements of A from B. Suppose we have the same example. Now what we're going to do is to remove the elements of A from B. Now we're going to remove 1 but since there is no 1 in set B, no need to remove that. For, and then next we're going to remove 2. We're going to remove 3, but there is no 3 in set B. Now, we will be removing 4. 
And then the next one, we're going to remove 5. Now, since there are no elements left for set B, the answer for B minus A is an empty set. The next set operation is all about the complement of a set, usually denoted by the symbol prime. In this case, if we are asked to get the complement of a given set, what you're going to do is to look for the elements that are present in the universal set but are not present to the given set. For example, here we have the, uh, the universal set with elements 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 and set A with elements 2 and 4. If we are asked to get the complement of set A, again, you're just going to look for the elements that are in the universal set but are not in set A. And those are 1, 3, and 5. Note that the difference of two sets is not the same with the complement of a set because in the difference of two sets, you have two given sets involved while in the complement of a given set, you have a single set involved and the universal set.